Hello and welcome. Today we will be dealing with uh, if our first case on cantilever, so which is a cantilever with an end load. So we'll be drawing the shear force and the bending moment diagram. All right. So for us to do this, the first thing we are going to do is to uh, draw the free body diagram of this fixed uh, side. Is that clear? So for us to draw this, uh, we know when we have a fixed uh, support like this, for us to draw the free body diagram, uh, we are going to have, because there's no direction in uh, any way, you understand? No uh, upward or downward movement and there's no rotation. Is that clear? All right. So now, uh, for us to draw the free body diagram of this, we are going to have an upward, then an upward uh, reaction, then a uh, reaction in the S direction. Then we are also going to have what? We are going to have a moment. All right. So, but we are going to be neglecting uh, our reaction in the S direction. All right. So this is our... All right. Let's say this is our reaction. Sorry, please. All right. So now this is our reaction at uh, point B. All right. So let's just put our moment. So M A. Moment at point A. All right. So I'm not going to be putting a uh, a reaction at what S direction because. Uh, we don't have any uh, uh, horizontal forces here. All right. So now, uh, for us to do this, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to calculate the uh, re uh, direction. That is, the sum of upward force will be equal to what the sum of what downward forces. So we are going to say R B, R B. So we are going to take our coordinates. Let's say the sum of force in the y direction should be equals to what? Zero. So let's take our upward force to be positive, then our downward force to be negative. That clear? All right, so here we have our ROB to be what? Positive. So it's going to be ROB, ROB, R subscript B minus what? Minus W will be equals to what? Zero. So it therefore means R subscript B will be equal to what? W. All right. So it shows that uh, the reaction here will be equal to what? This weight. That is, the reaction here will balance this weight. All right. So now, the next thing we are going to do now is we are going to calculate the shear forces. So let's do the shear force calculation. All right, so let's start with the shear force at point A. Shear force at point A will be equals to, all right, uh, this condition still hold, yeah, upward force positive, downward force negative. So uh, if, you look, if you start at point A and you look to the right, we don't have any force apart from what? Apart from this force that is here. All right, so it means that our uh, shear force at point A is going to be what? Minus W, all right. Now, again, we don't have any other force here apart from what? Point B. So for us to calculate the shear force at point B, the shear force at point B will be equal to... Now, if you stand at point B now, if you stand at point B, and you look at your right hand side, you are going to have this force. Then if you look at this, if you look at it down, you are going to have another force here. So it means we have two force. All right, so we are going to have... And uh, don't forget, this condition still hold the same. And uh, this is going to be minus W plus what plus rob but our rob is the same thing as what w so this is going to be minus w plus w which is going to be equals to what zero i hope we understand this all right so the next one is uh the bending uh moment calculation All right, so we we'll start with the bend moment at point A. Bending moment at point A. All right, now we know what moment is. Moment is force times perpendicular distance. We start at point A, then to the right. We only have uh, force, but we don't have perpendicular distance. So it shows that 
uh, the bend moment at point A is going to be equal to zero. And if you look at uh, our introduction class, we've already said that uh, the bend moment at the free end of a cantilever beam is equal to what? Zero. All right. So now, uh, the next uh, point here is point B. So the bending moment at point B will be equal to, now, if we stand at this point here, if we stand at this point, and uh, we have this, uh, we have this uh, uh, weight here, it is load on this beam. So this is the weight and this is the total distance. Total distance is what? A. So now the uh, moment here is going to be what? W multiplied by what? A. But don't forget, we have said that our upward force is positive and our downward force is what? Negative. And I've explained this concept to us that this uh, downward force here is going to produce a what? It's going to produce a clockwise moment. Is that clear? So here, you say your downward force is negative. It's, you're also saying that your clockwise uh, moment is negative. And if you say your upward force is positive, you are saying that your anti-clockwise moment is what? Positive. All right. So here, we are going to have this to be what? Minus W multiplied by what? Multiplied by L. All right. So we can therefore draw the bending, uh, the shear force and the bending moment diagram. All right. For us to do that, uh, we at uh, every, every point that we have load, we are going to trace it down. All right. So, yeah. So now, the next thing we are going to do now is to draw the uh, reference line for our what? Shear force and the reference line for our what? Bending moment. All right. So here, yeah, this one is representing uh, the reference line for our shear force. So here is zero. Here is also zero. All right. So at point A, our shear force at point A is what? Is negative what? Negative uh, W. So negative W. So uh, above this line is positive and below is what? Negative. So here, we are going to take any point here as our what? Negative side. Let's take this side to be negative. Negative W. Let's say this is negative W. All right. So we are going to trace it down. All right, so this is the negative W side. All right, so now if you check from this point, from point A to point B, we don't have any other load. So we are just going to connect this point to this point. Then uh, you will observe that our shear force at point B is zero. Then we'll go back to zero. So we are going to have it in this form. All right, then you go back to what? You go back to zero. All right, so this is our what? Our shear force diagram. Shear force diagram. All right, so if you wish to shade this, this is negative side. So here you can shade. All right, so now the next thing we want to look at is the bending moment. All right, now this is our bending moment reference line too. So this part is going to be what? Zero, and this part too is what? Zero, all right. So now uh, the bend moment at point A is zero, but the bend moment at point B is what? Is nothing but what? Uh, negative W what? W L, all right. So if you come to this point, we have zero, right? And uh, if you come to this uh, point B, we have zero too. But at point B, we can go down. We can go down. But uh, let's just use this method. We know if we have zero at our point A, this is zero. And between point A and uh, B, there's no force, so we move like this, right? 
All right. So now this is point B. Point B is what? Negative WL. So negative WL will fall at somewhere here. Is that clear? Negative WL will fall somewhere on this post. So let's just make this place. It will be our negative WL. All right. So now that is our negative WL. Then now, the next thing is to connect this point zero to what? To this point. All right. So, and uh, we know that every uh, constant line, that is straight line, on our shear force diagram will be replaced with what inclined line on the what on the bending moment diagram so we are going to use an inclined line here all right so this is negative side as well all right so can shade again all right so uh and here hence the solution to this above question so just uh, but we are just starting we are going to see a lot of we are going to solve a lot of complex uh, work for various competitive exams. Uh, st thanks. Stay tuned.